I am so glad that God has permitted me to live to see this day. And I am thankful to God for the opportunity to share with you in this devotion. I call your attention to John Newton's song, one that so many people sing and love. The song entitled, Amazing Grace, wrote based on Romans 5.20, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. In the third stanza, he said, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Amazing grace. How sweet the song. Wow. Wow. What a wonderful word. And then Frank Gallock, he wrote this one. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Forever my promise is true. Though trials confound you and troubles surround you, my spirit will make your heart new. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace will supply all your need for all things together. Walk good if you love me. My grace is sufficient for you. Wow, wow, what a reminder. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, he is explaining to them something about God's grace in his life. And he is saying to them that he received a thorn in his flesh from the Lord. And he said, the messenger of Satan, he is the one who brought it. I close last morning. And if you want to find where we are in Second Corinthians, and we are studying chapter 12, verse 1 to 10. In my last devotion, I close by beginning to share with you what was the purpose of this thorn in his flesh? If God allows something to happen to me, if God allows something to happen to you, it got to be a reason why he allowed it. If he did it, it got to be a reason and a good reason, not a bad one. Many times we fail to see this. But today we're going to look at the purpose of this thorn in the flesh. When unpleasant things happen to us, we usually ask God, why did you permit such? In Paul's case, we have the answer. It is revealed to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Here is the purpose. Unless I should be exalted or elevated above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. This man could have stayed there and complained and complained, but he quickly understood why God gave it to him. And God revealed to him why he gave it to him. There is no doubt that this was possible, he could become proud. No doubt that Paul could become proud. That was a temptation of his. Why would he become proud? Because of what we have learned from the text. 14 years prior to his writing, he experienced an amazing happening. One that I never experienced. One that I don't plan to experience in my natural life. One that you haven't experienced, and I am not sure that you will experience. So this man had a special experience. He talked about it in verse 2 to verse 6. He said, I knew a man in Christ. This is a man that he's talking about. And he said, this man, he knows him well. He said, about 14 years ago, 14 years ago, something happened with this man. He said, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. 
In other words, he's saying, I don't know if this thing happened in the physical body. I, it was a vision. God took me out of the body, took me to where he took me. And I saw this. He said, I don't know. But what happened? He said, such an one caught up to the third heaven. I don't know if it was in the body that the person went up or God took the spirit of the person and took them to heaven, the third heaven where God dwells. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knew it. See what he's telling you again? The second time he repeated it. How that he was caught up into paradise, such a man, and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. He's telling you that he know of such a man. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my informity. Of course, you would understand that you want to tap the stomach and tell you, I was caught up into the third heaven and I did this. He said, I know a man. He's trying to be as humble as he can and explain it. Some folks, they get a little dream and next morning they're all over the place telling everybody how they dreamt this and how they dreamt that and they saw God. Paul was very careful. He said, for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. In other words, he says, I got to be careful not to show off, because if I begin to show off, listen, people would look at me differently. Not that they would think more of him. He said, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Wow. He just wanted everybody, watch, to just think of him correctly. And he don't want to exalt himself. Now, this was another amazing event in Acts chapter 14, verse 19 and 20. The Bible said, And there came to the certain Jews from Antioch and Iconian, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing that he'd been dead. Watch this. While he was in Antioch, while he was there, there were those folks who came and stoned him. The Bible says, how be it as the disciples stood round about him. He was on the ground, they stoned him, they left him there as he was dead. The disciples stood around him. He rose up, came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. Dead, but God took him up. God gave Paul a thorn to keep him humble. It was not an accident that he got into and gave him this thorn. This thorn was on purpose. I want to tell you something today. The trials that come our way, your trials, my trials are on purpose. When we see life from God's perspective, we will surely view life different. As a child of God, we must be very careful not to attribute to Satan what is not his. In John chapter 13 and verse 7, Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know here after. We are all human, and many times we don't understand why God does what he does. Jesus is speaking to Peter. He told him, you don't fully understand. You don't know what I do, but one of these days you will understand. And you know what? We too, we don't fully understand, but one of these days, we will understand the purpose for all the trials that God allowed in our lives. Believers, stand true to God and let Him work His purpose in your life. 
My grace is sufficient for you. Forever my promise is true. Though trials confound you and troubles surround you, my spirit will make your heart new. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace will supply all your need. For all things together work good if you love me. My grace is sufficient for you. Father, thank you for the sufficiency of your grace. And Lord, now that we understand that you, God, have a purpose in these trials, thank you for every trial. As we go through these, God, help us not to fail you. Help us to have the right attitude. Help us to put everything in your hand. We love you. We praise you. For the one that's going through trials today that don't know you, may they acknowledge today that they need you and cry out to you, ask you to forgive them and to save them. Thank you, God. Thank you. We love you. Thank you for the people that take it upon themselves to share. And for those who are thinking of sharing, Oh God, encourage their hearts. And for those to whom we share with and refuse even to listen or share, dear God, encourage their hearts also that one day they will get involved in sharing the gospel, whether by track or by whatever means. Bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Do have a great day. We love you in the Lord.